the Southern Arkansas University Police Department, as well as Sheriff Johnny Tadlock of the McCurtain County, Oklahoma Sheriff's Department, have announced the arrest of a suspect in the November 2nd uh, theft of five horses and other equipment from the Mule Rider Stables on the campus of Southern Arkansas University. Warrants have been issued also for two other suspects in Oklahoma. Um, J.C. Ray Jackson, 18, of McCurtain County, Oklahoma, was arrested during a traffic stop approximately 1 p.m. today by Arkansas State Police Trooper Seth Penner. She was taken into the McCur uh, Columbia County Detention Facility and charged with six felony counts related to the theft. Now those felony counts, six felony counts, were off of warrants issued through the Southern Arkansas University Police Departments. The charges include three counts of theft of property over $25,000, a Class B felony each, and three counts of theft of property between $5,000 and $25,000, which each carries a Class C felony. Uh, she is also being held on three felony charges out of Oklahoma, including bringing stolen property into the state, knowingly concealing stolen property, as well as cruelty to animals. No other warrants have been issued in Arkansas as of yet, but we do expect more arrests to be made in the days and weeks to come. I want to reiterate, our investigation is still ongoing. Other suspects known to be involved in this case uh, will be brought to justice and we won't, will not rest and conclude this case until everybody that was involved or had a hand in this case is brought before the courts. Um, if anybody has any information, any further information regarding this case, please contact the Southern Arkansas University Police Department at area code 870-235-4100 or the Arkansas State Police Investigator Hayes McWhorter at 870-703-2067. Or even the McCurtain County Sheriff's Department at area code 580-286-3331. Now I'll call up uh, Prosecuting Attorney David Butler uh, to take any questions or to make any statement regarding the charges. Thanks, Chief. Before I start, I want to thank all the law enforcement officers who were involved in this investigation. This is a very high profile, very difficult case for this community to deal with. Chief Blummer and his group have done a great job in dealing with a case that where a lot of the facts are in Oklahoma. I'd also like to thank the McCurtain County Prosecuting Attorney's Office, the State Police, and the McCurtain County Sheriff's Office, and the U.S. Attorney's Office. We have visited today with the U.S. Attorney about whether this is going to be a state or federal case. And it's my prediction this is going, as far as Ms. Jackson is concerned, this is going to be a state case at this moment. Now what will happen procedurally is she's been arrested today. Tomorrow she'll be taken in front of the circuit judge to determine a bond that's called a first appearance. Then I'll be filing charges and Ms. Jackson will have a formal arraignment on the 15th of December here in Columbia County Circuit Court. And then at least as to her. Now right now she was my understanding that's the only person that's been arrested here in Arkansas. Yes sir. Is her, uh, there are other suspects that are brought here uh, the job of the prosecuting attorney's office, she, Ms. Jackson is presumed to be innocent, uh, but as far as our office is concerned, obviously we will be seeing that justice is done. I'll be happy to entertain any questions or anything I can say. What led up to the arrest? Cooperation between the different authorities in Oklahoma, here in Southern Arkansas University, a combination of sources of information led to the arrest. That's all we can say at this time. Do we have a motive? Yes. Um, but I, I'm not, as prosecutor attorney, I'm not supposed to say anything about the case. However, as you're aware, if you will contact my office tomorrow for a probable cause affidavit, uh, the probable cause affidavit will contain everything you need in there. Is Ms. Jackson a student at SAU? Sir? Is Ms. Jackson a student at SAU? Yes, she, yes, she is. What class? Junior, senior? She's a freshman at uh, Southern Arkansas University. Uh, was she a member of the rodeo team? Yes. Uh, did she have horses stabled at New Rider Stables? And if so, what is their status? We're not going to get into any particulars about where horses were located or where equipment was located. That's part of the investigation. Is Jackson responsible for the death of one of the horses? A 
again, that's part of the investigation. We're not going to get into that right now. Uh, by the contents of the statement, I, I just want to make sure that the uh, other two suspects are not yet in custody. No. Uh, as far as my knowledge, no, they are not in custody. Those are going to be Oklahoma warrants, and they'll be served by the McCurtain County Sheriff's Department. What kind of relationship do they have with Ms. Jackson? Is it boyfriend, girlfriend, Again, mother, we're, sister? We're not going to talk about any connections uh, between the suspects. That's still part of the investigation, and it will all come out um, if this goes to trial. I'm, again, that's part of the investigation. We're kind of keeping that close, um, again, until this plays out in trial. Do you have any type of time frame for the theft of the credit card? We're not going to get into that. Uh, that is part of the investigation. We do have that information, but we're not going to share that uh, at this time. Uh, chance, it's question. What was the physical relationship and distance between where a credit card was found and uh, the other, other horses were found. We'll just say the same general vicinity. How long has he been a suspect? Um, you know, we're really not going to talk about that. We've been developing leads since day one. Um, and our investigation information um, that we've obtained has led to several people of interest, uh, including Ms. Jackson. And um, again, that's going to all come out uh, if and when this goes to court. I know you pick her up on the stop her out on Highway 82 out there. Were you waiting on her or was uh We have. We were in the general vicinity um, with the warrants in hand, uh, waiting on a chance opportunity, whether she was pulled over or um, if she made herself known. We had warrants in hand for her arrest. Well, did she live on campus or here in town somewhere? No. Well, the uh, one thing I will say is um, there's also a criminal mischief statute that I'm going to be looking at. She's charged with theft of property. Theft of property over 25000 that, that involves the value of the horse, which is something the prosecuting attorney's office has to prove. What is the value of the horse? And one of the other statutes involves criminal mischief, and the question was asked concerning whether or not uh, one of the horses was, was, the, was the horse fatally killed in this situation, and that is going to be part of this case, and I'm just determining whether or not criminal mischief fits this in addition to theft of property. Now you're looking at a penalty of up to 20 years on each count of every horse valued at over $2,500. And then there's a statute involving $25,000. So the, 25, the, the rules just changed on this this summer, but we have $2,500 and $25,000. I assume, Chief, that what we know now, all the horses are valued at well over 2500 and some of them over 25000 Yes. So anything over 25000 has a penalty range of up to 20 years of prison. Would you comment on the, this is an unusual case. People just don't steal horses every day. Uh, I think this is more toward cheap plumbers. Uh, could you talk about a little bit of the of the effort that, that you had to expand. As you were saying, a lot of the evidence is in Oklahoma, it's not in Arkansas. Uh, you're dealing evidently with a crime that wasn't actually witnessed by anyone uh, here on campus. Yes. Uh, would you just elaborate on that a little bit? Well, as in any, any crime, um, if it exceeds your jurisdiction, your jurisdictional boundaries, you're going to elicit the help of other agencies to assist. Um, we did that with the Arkansas State Police. Um, we also have other agencies when the stolen property became uh, apparent in Oklahoma. The McCurtain County Sheriff's Office was brought in. Um, a lot of resources have been shared between our agency, um, the Arkansas State Police, as well as McCurtain County, Oklahoma Sheriff's Department. So it, it's one, when, whenever you exceed your capabilities in a particular location, um, you get help from other resources, and that's what we've done here. I asked this question last time, so I'll try it again. Uh, were, the, were the people who allegedly stole the horses ever in any communication with the uh, people from whom they were stolen? Uh, 
again, I'm not going to, as I mentioned at the last press conference, we're not going to get into talking about who said what to who. Um, that's all part of the investigation. And of course, with any type of um, communications, there's logs, there's phone records, things of that nature. And that all has to be gone through. Um, and it would hurt the case if we started talking about who was talking to who. When. So, so nothing in the way of ransom or threats or, or anything of that nature? Again, we're not going to talk about the motive um, of the perpetrators. Um, we're just going to focus on building our case. If any additional suspects, we have a probable cause for any additional suspects, they will be brought to justice as well. Partial answer to the question was about horses. And some people say, what's the big deal? It's a bunch of horses. About 20 years ago, we had a case for south of town. We had, uh, I was involved in getting a search warrant and we seized 25 horses because of Letty was starving to death. And I was instrumental in getting an arrest warrant for this 80 year old lady who went to jail. This is serious business, folks. And uh, we're going to, the prosecutor turns out going to treat that way. That's probably about all we need to say today. Thank you all. You got anything else you want to say? One thing? Well, if Dr. Rankin wants to make any final comments, we're going to kind of leave the floor open for him. I want to thank all the law enforcement offices, uh, the authorities that were involved in this, and Southern Arkansas University. With we love our horses, and we're glad that this is beginning to reach a resolution, so we'll have some confirmation on what actually happened. But we appreciate uh, the University Police Department, Arkansas State Police, the Kirk County Sheriff's Department, local prosecutor's office for the work that they have done, and everyone else that's had a, an interest in uh, helping this case. So I'm very pleased that uh, we're moving toward a conclusion, finding out what happened. I feel pretty good. I'm glad that the, it's moving, the case is moving forward and we're closer to justice. And how do you feel about your fellow rodeo members' horse uh, dying as a result of all of this? Uh, I think it's a shame that's how to lead to this. And I wish things could have gotten solved faster before anything like that was happening. It's got to hurt that a fellow member of the rodeo team, you know, presumably someone y'all trusted, and work with to do something like this. Yeah, it does. Describe the sense of betrayal. No comment. Did you know the young lady? I did. What can you tell us about her? Nothing really. She's just a freshman. She's new. Did you ever expect anything like this from her? No. 